Hey guys, Joe here with a quick tutorial on e-steps, mainly when it comes to your extruder. When you first get a kit, or any 3D printer for that matter, that's not heavily supported and isn't a cookie cutter of every other printer, you're going to have to do some calibration. One of the most important calibrations that you need to accomplish is your e-steps calibration on your extruder motor. The reason is this directly relates to what kind of flow you get out of the nozzle. If you don't have the correct value in that steps setting in your firmware, you're not going to have correct flow. You're going to get over extrusion or under extrusion. It's just not going to look right. Uh, your prints will be oversized if they print correctly at all or undersized if they pr print correctly at all. So calibrating your extruder steps per millimeter is one of the most crucial things you need to do before you start printing away. A lot of time uh, companies that produce kits will give you a ballpark figure on what the steps per millimeter for your extruder motor should be. This isn't always the right value. There's going to be decimal points, there's going to be other variables at play that change what your specific steps per millimeter will end up being. So what I want to do is just show you how to quickly get the correct value for those steps. I'm going to be doing this on my FT5 because a lot of these questions have been coming from the Folger Tech Facebook group on Facebook obviously. So I'm going to take my Folger Tech FT5 and show you how to calibrate these steps per millimeter for your extruder motor. There's going to be some math, just a warning, but it's hopefully going to end up being a little clearer to you once I get done explaining it. So first thing we need to do is figure out what our current steps per millimeter is set to, which we can do a couple of ways. So the first place that we're going to look for our e-step default and our printer is inside of the firmware itself. So this would be inside the firmware that you uploaded to your printer when you first built it or when you first purchased it. You're going to get inside of the configuration.h tab. You're going to scroll down past the mechanical settings and somewhere in the auto bed leveling settings you're going to go to the bottom of that and find default access steps per unit. Now you're going to see a couple of values listed here. You're going to see X, Y, Z, and the extruder. You may have a fifth value after that one, and that would be for a second extruder, which you would also need to calibrate the same as we calibrate the first. So as you can see, I've got a value of 105 as my default inside the firmware. So I'm going to take note of that real quick. 105 is my existing, or my old, access steps per unit for my extruder. There is a second place to find this value if you don't want to dig into your firmware, but it does require that you have EEPROM enabled on your printer. So inside of your printer you find yourself a terminal command here, so if you have EEPROM enabled you can do this, if you do not have EEPROM enabled click here and it'll take you to my video on how to enable EEPROM and use EEPROM and also PID tune. With EEPROM enabled, you simply type an M501 command and it'll give you default values or your EEPROM stored values, which are the ones the printer looks at anyway when you have EEPROM enabled. So steps per unit, you'll see listed here are the same as it was in the firmware. I haven't changed any of this so I'm still at 105 right here for my extruder, but you notice now it gives me X, Y, Z, and E, so I can now easily tell what's what. I can also change all these steps via the EEPROM, which will also change it for printing, but I'd also want to put those into the actual firmware file itself, just in case I ever needed to clear my EEPROM but this is an easy way to find out what your printer is actually looking at as far as steps. You've got your current step setting for your extruder motor. Let's go ahead and start the calibration process. Tools that you will need will include either a set of calipers or a metric ruler with millimeters 
defined on it and some kind of marking device preferably something that marks easily like a sharpie a regular pin could work but we want nice bold markings so what we're going to do first is we're going to measure from a specific point on the extruder and then we're going to go a hundred millimeters from that point point. and the point that I'm going to be using will be the top of right here this is for my filament guide and I don't want to take the bracket off now if you don't have this bracket your best bet is to measure directly from here where the filament goes into the extruder that way you have a nice flat platform but since I've got all this mess in the way I'm gonna measure from here so don't be confused there so set your calipers if you're using those to a hundred millimeters or get out your ruler and get a hundred millimeters ready to go and we're going to go ahead and mark that on our filament real quick so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my calipers and just gently hold it right here at this base and then I'm going to take my filament and line it up okay so that's a hundred millimeters I want to mark where the hundred millimeter line is here all right so that's marked. Now I'm going to mark at the 120 millimeter. You'll get a lot of people who say mark at the 150, but if your steps are that far off, then you need to find a better place to start than the steps in there. Usually I find the value on a printer kind of like this one start at 100 steps, that'll get you close. So now I'm going to mark at 120. Okay. So now I've got two marks on the filament. One at 100, and one at 120. 100, 120. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and start extruding filament. I've got my hot end preheated to 210 degrees, this is for uh, PLA. I'm just going to extrude 10 millimeters at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ten so you can see my hundred mark lined up perfectly with ten clicks of the extruder button that equal ten millimeters so I just traversed a hundred millimeters worth of filament and got to the exact point that I wanted to now if I was off and it went past my measuring point, that's where the 120 mark comes in. Because so I would measure the difference between the two here, and then I would put that into my equation. But for the sake of this video, let's say that my filament was off. Let's say that my steps were not correct. And let's say that my mark for 100 was here. Let's say that that's my 100 mark. Let's forget that that's the 120 mark for a second. So what I would do then is I would mark, go ahead and measure the remaining distance between the two, between the point that I measured initially and this new point. You can see that's 20. And then I'm going to take note of that. So we took note of our old E-step value. Now I'm going to take note of my distance traveled. So if I've got 20 millimeters remaining here and I marked at 100, that means the filament actually moved 80 millimeters. And from there, we do some math.
The math that we need to do is relatively simple. We just take the old E-step value and plug it in with the actual distance that the filament traveled divided by 100. Then we multiply those two. The reason why this number is 100 is because that's how much filament that I think I was supposed to have extruded. Since I clicked my extrude button 10 times each time extruding 10 millimeters, I should have it extruded 100 millimeters worth of filament. And that's why that value is there. You can also do this with any other number depending on how many times you click your extruder. So let's get in and plug in these values. So our old E-step value we saw was 105. And then we've got 100 divided by the actual distance traveled. And for the sake of this uh, tutorial, we're going to say that that's 80. So automatically I'm going to do 100 divided by 80. And I'm just going to do this on a calculator even though I know what it is. I'll show you. So 100 divided by 80. We do this first because of order of operations. We see that that's 1.25. So we're going to take 105 times 1.25. That is our next math problem. So 105 times times 1.25. 131.25. And that's it. So our new E steps equals 131.25. So you'll get back into your firmware and plug that into where the E steps the old E-step value was, you're going to plug this in in its place. If EEPROM is enabled, you can go ahead and update this via the EEPROM using the M92 command. So it would be M92 space E131.25. You'd hit enter, and then you'd follow that up with an M500 command to save the EEPROM settings. And then in your printer firmware will actually, or the controller would look at this in the EEPROM. But you'd want in your actual firmware file as well, just in case your EEPROM gets erased. So my original was 105, and we saw that 105 hit the nail on the head because I was able to get 100, 100 millimeters out of extruding what I thought was 100 millimeters. So I'm good with 105. I can do any additional f tweaking via flow rates or anything like that. I can also put some decimals in here on my 105 to get uh, a little bit more accurate if I wanted to split hairs which splitting hairs when it comes to 3D printing is not that bad of an idea so there's always room for tweaking and like I said if you've got dual extruder set up you need to do this for each extruder but that's the math and that's how you get your new value so there you have it one of the most basic but essential calibrations that you can do to make your 3D printer print better. Other things that you can do are the flow rate adjustment that I talked about to get your flow just right and also making sure that your first layer is adjusted properly for the flow percentage that comes out when it lays down that first layer. So with that, I hope this video was informational and easy to follow. If it was helpful to you, give me a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down and uh, hit the subscribe button if you're interested in more tutorials. I'm going to try to get out a tutorial this weekend about the difference between a standard direct drive extruder and a Bowden or Bowden setup uh, that you might see on Delta machines and other Cartesian machines. But that's all I've got for this short one and I hope that it was helpful. See you guys later.